Dominic, wedding DJ. And this is Serena, wedding planner. And together we are the, the wedding, wedding duo. duo. We are here to talk all things weddings. Planning a wedding can be stressful, but we are here to help. So before you say, that's it, we're going to Vegas, don't go to Vegas. Let's have some fun. Join us as we answer your wedding questions and help navigate planning one of the biggest days of your life with The, the Wedding, wedding Duo. Duo. Hello, everyone, and welcome back to our fantastic, fabulous, wonderful, too much? Too our much. podcast. Our podcast. <laughs> welcome back to our podcast. Let's just say podcast. <laughs> but we're so excited today because we have a guest. And a you guest. Know, we love bringing on other professionals to share their perspective so that you guys don't just listen to us jabber on. You can listen to other people jabber on. Although I think we're very entertaining jabbers. <laughs> it's true. We can be. We can be. But today we have our guest, Tanya Pushkin, and she's also known as the Vow Whisperer. So let's say hello. Hello, Tanya. Hello. Hello. How are you both? We are well, and we really appreciate you joining us today. Please introduce yourself. Tell our audience a little bit about yourself. Tanya Pushkin, a.k.a. The Val Whisperer. I started this business about three years ago. I was part of the corporate world, leading public relations and corporate philanthropy and managing celebrities' lives, et cetera, for many, many years. Prior to that, I went to Juilliard. I was an actress, mm -hmm. um, had a fantastic career until I decided it was done. It was over, which is why I entered the corporate world. And then my own second wedding three years ago prompted me to start this business, which is actually, um, I've been called a category creator because I created a new category in, <laughs> in the wedding business. It didn't exist before. That's fabulous. So, so what is that exactly? What do you do for couples? I have uh, quite a few services and I'm building as, as we speak, there are more services coming into play, but I, I started out as a vow coach and that is something that I still do more than anything else. And essentially couples want to write their own vows, but they don't know where to start. They get inundated or overwhelmed or they're terrified of speaking in public, all of that. Mm -hmm. They come to me and What's really important to note is that I'm not the writer. I believe that it's got to come a million percent from your hearts, not mine. I don't know what you're feeling. All I can do is try to get everything out of you, mm. your memories, your anecdotes, your stories, your obstacles, your promises, the, what the future looks like, every little one of these details. I take your words. And I craft your vows with your words. Wow. So that it's completely a as genuine as you can get. You, Yes, there are vow writers out there. There are not many, but there are a few where they interview you. And a week later, they say, here you go. Here are your vows. And that's it, not how I work at all. We just, you know, we dig very deeply into their lives and you know, and I, I start with a questionnaire, which really forces people to go back in time to relive so many of these amazing experiences they've had together. And it's, it's the, the result of their sitting there writing all this stuff out and, and which by the way, I give them plenty of time to do. It's not, you know, you can't turn this around overnight. It takes time. And once, um, I've given them back the first draft of their vows. Then we go back and forth and we edit together. It's extremely collaborative until they're happy. And when I say they, I mean the person. I work with each person individually because I really believe vows should be top secret <laughs> and not heard until the moment of. So when the person is happy, with where their vows are, that's when we start to practice. And it's so important to, I mean, you can write the most beautiful, gorgeous words in the world, but if you sound like you're flatlining, like you're monotone, no one's going to to pay any attention. They'll be out of there before you know it. I mean, in their minds, they'll be thinking like, 
when is this over? Mm-hmm. Right. And so practicing, practicing, and, and what, when I say practicing, I'll catch you if you're mumbling, if you're hunched over, if you're swaying from side to side, which people do a lot of, if you don't know how to project your voice, if you are losing the ends of your sentences, because most people do that, they drop at the end. You know, there are all of these little details. It's all about the presentation and how you sound. And it's got to be engaging, memorable. You know, you have to keep people excited with these vows. I'm not saying become an actor and, <laughs> the, you know, perform this Academy Award. No, not at all. But these are three or four minutes of your time. I want you to own it and stand mm-hmm. there so confidently you know, expressing this love letter to the person who's about to become your spouse. It really is the highlight of, of the ceremony, right? The, the vows. I mean, people like to hear all the other parts, but yes. that is like, that's like the, it's, it's the eye of the storm. This is the that part they all waited for. And I wanted to say real quick, your background is fascinating to me because I, th- I find that the combination of uh, your, obviously your, actress days and having gone to Juilliard, which is so exciting. I don't think I've ever met anybody that actually has right. attended Juilliard. <laughs> um, but then your corporate world as well, uh, it's like it, there are two sides of this, right? There's the, because it is, it's very theatrical, I think is a great way to bring that aspect into it. But also it needs to be some structure there as mm-hmm. well. Because when I tell people like, uh, for me, my background, I, I was an army officer, but then I was also a stand-up comedian. And I said, those are two personalities that are not usually the same thing, but it works really well for what I do because I want that wedding to be structured and that timeline to be dialed in and on on point. But then there has to be that other side of it because I'm a performer. I want there to be some energy and some personality. And it's very comparable with what you bring to to the couples, for sure. I see that. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. 100%. Yeah, it is is a mixture of, and it's interesting because... When I look, sometimes I look for people. I mean, I, I thankfully am getting very, very busy and I need help. And it's interesting when I'm trying to find the kind of people who could do what I do, I can't find it in one person because, for example, I'll use a writer, but that writer doesn't act or didn't act. If they did, that's a miracle. Or I'll use an actor who can't string a sentence together. Mm-hmm. So <laughs> yes. I haven't found mm-hmm. I haven't found that that combination of somebody who can actually do what I do. I wish I could. Sure. So but what you're saying, yeah, you know, ex army and then stand up comedian, it's like, what? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It's not usually it doesn't so need to come up with yeah. the same person. Yeah. So so beyond that, what other you mentioned this service that I think is phenomenal and crucial to a lot of couples because they do struggle. They struggle with what they're going to say and are they going to feel comfortable up there? Are they going to feel confident? Mm -hmm. Um, So it sounds like you cover all of that, right? And what else beyond that? I'm sure there's more. Um, But yeah, the public speaking side is very, very important. So in terms of other services, something that really came out of the pandemic and I don't see it going away is, you know, the uncle Johnny or the best friend, Mary, or whatever decide, you know, being asked to officiate a wedding. Now, yes, that's a huge, huge ask. You mm-hmm. know, you're, you're asking uncle Johnny, could you write the ceremony? Uh, by the way, I know you've never even written one before, let alone, have you gone to any mm-hmm. weddings? I mean, it, you know, it's, a, <laughs> it's an enormous ask. So, And it's also a public speaking situation because not everybody Mm -hmm. is comfortable speaking in public. So here they've been asked to do this. I train or coach these people to run a ceremony like a pro. But the thing that I do that's really important is I take the biggest burden off their shoulders. They do not have to write this um, this ceremony. Mm. I will do that in conjunction with the couple. So, and the the reason why it's, and it's exactly, it's the the same way I officiate. I really believe that 
couple needs to be in complete control of their ceremony. They need to know what's being said. They need to, you know, choose the readings and how do they want to exchange rings? How do they want marriage to be spoken about? How do they want to be pronounced at the end? All of that is is so crucial in building a ceremony. And I really believe that the couple, the couple should be as involved as possible. So, oh my gosh, that is, yeah, we say that so often. And I'm so glad you're bringing that up because I think sometimes it gets overlooked. Honestly, people, they'll have someone, maybe a professional company or, you know, maybe someone from the church come in and they'll just give them free reign. Right. And it Mm -hmm. it really is important that the couple knows that they can have control, like you said, over what is said, over what pieces they can bring their own personal anecdotes, like you mentioned, into the ceremony. It's absolutely doable. And you're right. If you have the wrong person up there in front of that, it's really challenging. Exactly. And and there are a lot of officiants who work that way. They have, and I'm not saying it's good or bad or whatever, it's just different. You know, they have their templates and very often the couple doesn't see what the ceremony is going to be like. And, and yes. I'll always ask, you know, because I, I work with people all over the world with vows and I, you know, destination wedding weddings, for example, you're not at all in control of who's marrying you. You're going to, you know, Barbados or Jamaica or Bora Bora, (laughs) whatever. And you're getting the, you're getting the officiant that the venue is providing. Sure. And that officiant, you know, has a set ceremony and, you know, plugs in your names. And, and I always say, no, 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 let's write the ceremony and give it to that person. Yes, Yes, absolutely. It's important that we're getting that message out there to couples too, that they can have this much say in their ceremony. I think sometimes they think that they can't, like they think it just comes that way. And then sometimes I have, you know, not often, but heard after the fact from couples that they weren't as happy with what was said or how long it took or whatever the case may be. And so you just don't want to have that feeling. Right. It's just nice. I've ranted on this a few times. It's nice to hear somebody else from a different perspective <laughs> <laughs> that shares our that shares our our beliefs and this how important that is. So so we craft the ceremony together with a couple, but then with this non-professional officiant, what I will do is I'll give all the stage directions and I'll say, you know, it's important, for example, People, (laughs) someone who's not used to doing this will forget to tell people, please be seated after they rose for the bride. Oh my God, that is our thing. (laughs) I tell people, I I touch base when I go up and I put the microphone on the officiant and I say, and I go over like, what's the last thing you're going to say? So I know my music cue, right? And hit the music at the end. But then I say, especially if it's Uncle Charlie or, uh, you know, the maid of honor or somebody that's (laughs) like chosen to be up there. It's a, do you have, please be seated in your notes. If not, write it really big and bold because they do, they get nervous, they get in their notes, they don't even look up and they yep. don't even see and everybody else is up and down, up and down. It's And the photographer yep. can't take pictures. It, it happens so often. Mm-hmm. Exactly. So it's all those stage directions. It's, you know, when when the couple, they one the first one is ready to do their vows there's a whole thing of okay you move the microphone to this direction you take the vow book out of your binder you give them that that, that, and it's all stupid little stuff but it's stuff the officiant needs to know how to do and we practice the ceremony as often as they're willing to some of them are like i'm good (laughs) after one time (laughs) or um right or we'll pra- you know we'll practice as often as possible and and the best compliment i can get is when somebody or various wedding guests have gone up to this person at the end saying hey you need to quit your your day job and do this you know that <laughs> yeah. shows me okay they've done a they've done a good job so that's a big part of my business is is training or coaching and then doing what I call ceremony planning, which is really crafting that ceremony with the couple. It's really, there's so much that goes into it that I think people don't Appreciate grasp. Yeah. And uh, I've even actually referred to it as the blocking, right? Like when you're walking up there, where's the couple going to stand? Make sure they're close enough they can hold hands. Make sure you're saying the vows to each other, not to the officiant, you know, all those little things. Right, just, exactly. They, do, they get super nervous. They get really nervous. Mm-hmm. Uh, but I have a question about the vows. When you're working with the couple, Right. And um, yeah, 
some people just have the gift for gab, right? They've cl- they've kissed the Blarney Stone, if you will. Um, and then other people, and they've just got that gift of the, the writers and they're creative and they're just, they really can string together beautiful concepts, if you will. But then the other person is just like, that's just not me. I have seen bios that are so lopsided and sometimes my gender wrote it 20 minutes before on a napkin, whereas the bride has spent months crafting this beautiful thing. How do you, I'm sure you see it where you're like, Oh, okay. You got to pick it up because her vows are epic and yours are wah wah. You know, you have you run into that a lot. <laughs> That's a yes. <laughs> yeah, but the thing is, is that when they answer the questionnaire, I mean, the mm-hmm. worst that they could do for me, for my, for my point of view, is write a bullet, you know, in bullet points. This bullet points mm-hmm. is not a full thought out sentence, so you're not really giving me what I need here. Um, when there's a, when someone's really stuck and they, it doesn't come easily to them. And I will say, yes, your gender is more likely to. (laughs) We own that. We own that. That's no, but you know what? Men can write absolutely beautifully. And I went through a period of time where I was saying to everybody, I think men write better than women do. It was just a phase that was going Mm -hmm. on. It was crazy. Yeah. (laughs) there, I, well, I have a theory about this, that, you know, we women will yak away and gab to each other about everything and talk to each other and mm. share secrets and, and men don't do that. And mm-hmm. here is an opportunity for them to open themselves up in a way they never have before. And that's why sometimes what comes out of a man is so extraordinarily expressive. It blows me away. But yes, it, it, of course it happens when one of, out of two is just has not written well at all. At that point, there are a couple of different avenues we can take. I will interview that person. Makes it much easier. Mm-hmm. They don't have to write. Um, I'll get it all down. Or what's not my business model, but what I do do occasionally is if somebody says, please just write them for me. So after interviewing them, I will write their vows and I won't only use their words. I will just write a complete set of vows. You know, I don't like doing that. That's not the business model, but that does have to happen occasionally. I could see that. And I have a question for you. Do you find that it is a good idea or what is your opinion on putting humor in the ceremony? Do you like to ha- encourage them to put a funny story or something memorable in that way? And, and what do you find that brings to, to the ceremony? Warmth. It brings a lot of warmth. Yes. It's wonderful. To, a funny little cute story. Absolutely. In fact, I think most people include that in vows, I, partly mm-hmm. because it's some, some of my questions make them come up with some of these funny stories. So yes, we'll sure. absolutely use them. Yes. It, it does so well, much. It helps people relax too, right? Because they're, they're so puckered up at that point because it's 18 months of planning. You just started, they get to the altar and there's like, ee, they're just wound so tight yes. and just something, something little just to get a giggle out of them. Just kind of, everybody kind of goes, oh, okay. It's like a communal sigh and we settle yes. in it just really helps because sometimes you never get that moment and it's just, it just feels so right. stressed. And this is a celebration people. We're not, right. <laughs> it's not a funeral. What, yes. You know, it's, a, I just, it really, I, I, I mean, I don't think it's a surprise to anybody that I like to bring humor into stuff, but um, that's what I, that's like always been my, my, my life. Like, how can I make this amusing? <laughs> right. Right. And I think it also, don't you think Tanya, it helps keep people's attention a little bit too, especially if you're going to have a oh, longer sure. ceremony, if it's personal, and you're telling a story about the couple or you have those pieces that are, you know, unique to that ceremony, people are in, involved. They're engaged, right? Absolutely. In fact, okay, so this is interesting. My my own second wedding, I didn't help my husband with his vows or he didn't help me with, you know, we had absolutely... <laughs> And I wasn't doing this work then. So it's not like I was some Mm -hmm. pro who knew what they were doing. And what was so extraordinary is that my husband's vows, he faced the guests almost as much as he Mm -hmm. faced me. It was as if, and it wasn't a comedy show, but it was 
so warm and affectionate and funny and mm. comical. And, you know, he brought up just the, I don't know, it got everybody in such an amazing mood. And you look at the photographs of mm. my ceremony, and most of them are people just laughing and laughing and laughing. Yeah. And I thought, wow, wow, if I could recreate that kind of feeling in another ceremony, and once in a while I can, you know, it depends on the people. Yes, absolutely. Now, let me ask you this. Do you perform ceremonies yourself if someone wanted you to? Yes, I do. I figured. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I officiate. I And that came, that was the last thing that I, I had been working with different cu couples on their vows. And I think one of them once said to me, I don't like my officiant. Could we use you instead? And I thought, okay. And I became one and I do do it. I, but I, it's not that I'm selective, but I don't do it as much anymore because that would mean literally being gone every single weekend. Yes. But I absolutely will do them. I came back from uh, Newport, Rhode Island yesterday, having just done one. And I did one in Telluride on top of a mountain. And that mm. was epic. So yes, I do officiate and I love doing Where's it. Where's home for you? Uh, New York City. Oh, you're okay. in the big city. We were just up there for a wedding earlier this summer. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, yeah, it is really, I got, I'm an ordained officiant myself. Uh, <laughs> I've only done one ah. wedding, but it was funny because somebody said, we wanted you to do the wedding. I go, yeah, I'll be there for music, microphones. They go, no, we want you to do the wedding. I go, you want me to like hominus, dominus, summonus? I go, okay. Uh, and it was, uh, I mean, Lord knows, kind of like yourself, I've seen a thousand plus weddings uh, and I've heard so many different vows. Um, but I really, I got, I got way in the weeds. I was like, oh, we're going to, what, like, do you want a religious or not religious? Do you want a funny story? Do you want a, a poem? Like what's your, and so we crafted together this beautiful ceremony. And, uh, and I remember I included the wedding party at one point, cause it was a part about the, your support from your family and friends. And I stopped, I remember looking over, right. like, I'm talking to you guys and they all kind of laughed. Cause I was like, they're all up there, but they don't usually get any acknowledgement. You know, they just walk up and walk away, you know, but. It was a, uh, but it was really right. good. I really enjoyed it. I would love doing it more, but I have a, I have my position back there <laughs> with my volume and my controls. What do you think, Tanya, makes like are some good points for couples? Now, don't give away all your secrets, but just some things that you would say are like the big things that make a good ceremony. Please be seated. Don't well, that, that yeah, that <laughs> we covered that. Yeah. One. <laughs> that make a good ceremony. So, well, one thing, don't make it a Catholic mass unless <laughs> you are in a church. Sure. 30 minutes is it. Do not go above yes. 30 minutes. Um, you lose it. Nobody, I mean, you, you don't have anyone's attention at that point. Vows, right. I would say um, 500 words, no more than that. And that's okay. That's about four minutes of speaking. It's enough. It's a good tip. Uh, yeah, I think it, it, people do tend to go on and on and on and mm -hmm. not needed. You know, 500 words is, is kind of the sweet spot. Do you have the other side of that? Do you have, do you have a minimum where you say, like, let's try to at least get to two minutes? What do you say for a minimum? Oh, yeah. yeah. I think two minutes is too short, but there are okay. people who, who that's what they want two minutes. So we do it right. in two minutes, but I, I don't think you can say it all in two minutes. Sure. But if that's what you want, that's what we do. Um, so I would say length is very important. And I, and I think what you were saying before, I think adding humor to a ceremony is so important. You want your guests, you know, you want your guests and it's my goal, whether I'm officiating or training an officiant or whatever, whoever, what, whatever the situation is, the goal that I always have is for the guests to walk away and say, oh my God, that was so them. In other words, those 30 minutes reflected who this couple is. Yes. You know, it, whether it was, you know, a readings they included or stories they told or whatever, what people need to walk away, just knowing they just got 30 minutes of you and your full you know, mm -hmm. brightness. And that that's the goal. It sh and it should never be boring. And very oftentimes it is. It doesn't need to be. A ceremony can be 30 minutes of fun. 
Yeah. Why not? I talk about that when we plan with our couples, like we talk about the whole day, right? The whole day, your taste in music should be all about the two of you. Table, name name your tables, places you visited or musicals that you enjoy or movies you saw together mm -hmm, or right. favorite songs. And you can incorporate it all in there and your favors and your, and your, your everything, the colors you chose, the dresses you picked, whatever. Yes. But even to get a ceremony, I mean, that is like what I mentioned earlier, your ceremony, that's where it all begins. The and pinnacle. your vows, like your vows, that is like the one moment where it's like, I think it's like one of the best parts of the day for sure. If they, uh, yeah. if they just had came up with beautiful vows and it just really was meaningful and touching. And, and to your point about the guys too, I mean, I always, whenever I talk to the couples initially, I say, and I say, I put the microphone on them. I go, cause that's what people really want to hear. If I don't have a mic on the groom sometimes, uh, or if there's no mics at all, people are out there like, I can't hear anything. And I'm like, yeah, uh, uh, just smile and nod, you know, but it drives me crazy. But, um, if they're going to do personal vows, because some people do repeat after, they don't do per But if they do, I go, I really want to put a mic on the groom. And I have an omnidirectional mic where the bride, when right. they're holding hands, she's talking right into his mic. I can usually hear her really well. But uh, I always say like, because right. uh, what they really want to hear is when the groom starts to go. <gasps> and I go, oh, he's going to cry. Turn it up to 11. <laughs> and I say, what's the, what's the over under on the groom crying? I say, is he going to cry? And she's like, he better. Or I don't know. Or no, he's not going to cry. But that moment at the altar. Yes. Usually there's sleep deprivation because people were up the night before and it's like, but when they come, when, if it's a, if it's a, uh, uh, you know, a homosexual, uh, excuse me, a heterosexual wedding where the bride comes around the corner and that groom sees her in that dress for the first time. It's just like, it's like this perfect mm. storm. They get emotional. They do. And especially during their vows, if they get emotional, it's just really pretty to see. It is. It's wonderful. And it sounds like Tanya, you have a little bit of the same you know, philosophy that we do about getting to know the couples, right? That that is part of your business model is really understanding who you're working with and making it all about them. Because this is one day in your life that you can really make it all about you, right? So what are some of your favorite moments you've seen or been a part of? Well, back to the beginning of your sentence, getting to know my couples. So in the work that we do for vows, I get mm -hmm. to know each one of them so well that it's okay. sometimes a little tricky. It goes into like therapy mode, it, you know, <laughs> because it, they're, they're telling me everything, including I mm. do ask, you know, tell me about some really rough times you guys have had together. Mm. I, I don't ask this of them together, but when I work with them separately, you know, and, and it's pretty heavy stuff can come out. And so I really, I end up knowing my couples pre pandemic. Um, I would meet all my couples in person to practice sure. or whatever it was, you know, and then a zoom took over and I don't ever need to see anybody again, <laughs> but <laughs> you know, it's, um, no, it's not true. Um, I, I really get to know them. And so if we've worked on the vows and I'm marrying them, it's the perfect scenario because they are not getting married by a stranger. They're getting married by a friend at that point. Yes. You know, and we will have gone out to dinner and drinks and hung out and because <laughs> yeah, I, I just, I love what I'm doing. And, and, and this is of course, if it, they're in New York or close by, but the business is growing right. and it's becoming more global and that's not going to be possible. But um, getting to know my couples really well is, is priority for me. You could put on your resume now, unlicensed therapist, maybe that's kind of part of your, <laughs> part of your shtick. <laughs> right. 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 So do you, do you have, do you have like some fun stories that we like, or just some really memorable moments? So for vows, there's, there's a story with, um, with vows. They were one of my first clients I have a, a question that is, when did you know for sure he or she was the one? They wrote not only about the same moment, but they used the same words. That's how oh, wow. in sync these two were. And yes. I didn't want to change that. I, I, I just thought this, th this was so extraordinary, the way they described it. And it was, and it was a very poignant story about how his father had become ill very quickly and they had only met two weeks earlier than that. And she said, 
and he, the father lived in Texas and the woman said, I'm going to go with you. See your dad. Mm. And they barely knew each other. And she apparently was so extraordinarily supportive and wonderful. Mm. And, you know, they had only known each other again, two weeks, but they spoke of that moment that they knew for sure that each other was meant to, they were meant to be for, you know, with each other. And in their vows, in their ceremony, the photographs of when one of them starts with that story and the other one is just going, oh my God, you are using my words. Oh, because they didn't know. Right. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> it, was, it was an absolutely beautiful moment. I have a lot of beautiful moments. I've, I've done Wish Upon a Wedding, which I'm not sure if you know what that is. It's it's like make a wish, but it's for, yes. yeah, it's for people where one of them is, you know, suffering a, a, a terminal illness and yeah, and, and they can't afford that dream wedding. So wish upon a wedding will step in with the top vendors. This is all over America. The top planners and DJs and florists and photographers, because we're all donating our time. And yes. I've done that. And that to me is, um, that, that has given me more fuel and more feel good than a lot of stuff to be able to do that. One of the memories in my head that just sticks out so clearly is it was a two gentlemen getting married and the one was a police officer and he was very stoic, you know, as I think you would expect a, a, a cop to be. Um, but he also was like, when he got up there and said his vows, I mean, it was just so moving. And I remember them so clearly because he had said like, once he had accepted really? he was gay, but he was in a male, I mean, he's a cop, right? That right. is a masculine environment. I mean, I know there's women that are cops and great cops, I'm not saying anything bad or negative, but that is, you're right on the, you're on the very masculine industry as a gay man. And he kind of was saying like, he had accepted the fact that he was going to be alone. And then he met this, he met the, his, his future spouse. And I was just like, I was, I was all in on his vows. I was sitting there going, they were so powerful yes. coming from him. And his, he shared his background um, and where he was at that moment when he met. And I was just like, dude, I mean, it was, it was beautiful and powerful and emotional. And I was like, this is the best wedding ever. It was amazing. <laughs> yeah. And that, that goes all to your point about what the ceremony can be. I think we should kind of wrap it up by talking about that and just letting couples know that you, you don't want it to be second to the reception. It should be first, right? Like it should be the focus, at, at least at some point in the planning process, um, you know, making that portion of your day a priority. Absolutely. And I think if there's a wedding planner involved, if there's a wedding planner involved, I really think it's the planner's job to help prioritize the ceremony because so often it's the point. last thing they talk about. It's the last thing. It's yes. like a month before it's like, oh, oh, right. What are we going to do for a ceremony? No, make it a priority. It's the most important yes. part. It's more important than her dress, than, than the music, than the food. Than mm -hmm. it, it's the 30 minutes that people are going to really remember more than anything else. It's that ceremony. And it's what you're going to remember as a couple, you know, so prioritize it, but, you know, make it, it is, I don't know, don't wait to write your vows the night before. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that drives me crazy. I see yeah. them in the groom suite, like with a pen and paper. And I go, seriously, yeah. are you doing your vows right now? Like, yeah, right. Right. This was already before. <laughs> so, so Tanya, is there anything else you want to share with us? This has been just really wonderful. I have really enjoyed this conversation. Yes, but we want to make sure you've shared all the wisdom and knowledge and anything else you want to share with us. Let's see. We've covered coaching the efficient, being an efficient myself, <laughs> uh, vow work, I'll throw in some speeches and toasts. I also do a lot of that. And oh, um, no, I, I think we've, those go we've, south we've fast. covered. <laughs> oh, they go south really fast. That, I mean, that's <laughs> another. There are people just. That's when Uncle Johnny, who's not only drunk, um, it's mm -hmm. way too late at night to be giving, giving a speech anyway. And he goes on for 10, 12, mm -hmm. 15 minutes. I mean, not necessary. Again, here is 500 words max. 
Don't go above mm-hmm. that. And no TMI. This is not a roast. <laughs> it's a yes. toast. You know, yes, I say that all the time, dude. That is a great tip. Yeah, but no, I think I, I think we've covered a lot. I think, but I don't know if we've done enough on the public speaking. I just want to add one mm-hmm. thing here in that in the practicing that we that I do with with each person where we really simulate I'm the other I'm the person about to you know who's going to become their their spouse I think um what's really important to know is that for any couples out there the trick to any getting over any sort of fear, you know, gaining your confidence, et cetera, comes to practice. You have to practice Mm. and you have to practice out loud as often as you can, Mm -hmm. because if you do that, you're going to shine. You're going to be fabulous. And working with me, you know, I mean, of course I'll, I'll catch all kinds of things that you, you're not going to realize that you do yourself, but it's okay. It doesn't matter. As long as you practice, it's, uh, it's the key. That's your inner actress. That's your actress coming out right there. Yep. Yep. <laughs> There's For a sure. reason why people rehearse and rehearse and rehearse and rehearse and rehearse. Yes. Exactly. So Tanya, exactly. tell the listeners where they can find you if they're interested in learning more or following along with what you do. Absolutely. Uh, the website is thevowwhisper.com. My Instagram is at thevowwhisper and my email is tanya at thevowwhisper. Wonderful. Wonderful. That's very easy. That is easy. Um, So thank you, everyone out there listening to our podcast. You know we like to end this um, by giving our appreciation because we wouldn't be able to do this without all of our listeners and our followers. Um, We want to thank profusely, Tanya, for coming and speaking with us today. This has been such a wonderful episode, um, really useful information, and just I just think it's a great perspective. So thank you, Tanya. Thank you very much. All right. And let's end it as we always do, my friend. You'll appreciate this, Tanya. Okay. We always say at the end of our podcast, your wedding day, very personal day. Don't let anybody talk you into anything you don't want to do or talk you out of something you have your heart set on. It's your day. Do you. Am I right? Go ahead. Jump in there. <laughs> I love that. Do you. I am stealing that. All right. <laughs> Faye, you are more than welcome. I didn't coin it. I, well, maybe we did coin that. I don't, I, don't know. Know. Anyway, I don't think so. That's been used many times, but it is a great, it's a great concept for every bride and every couple that's going through this process to remember. Yeah, absolutely. Happy wedding planning, y'all. Happy wedding planning. We're blowing kisses. Ah. Hey, so thanks for listening to our podcast. If you found any of this information helpful and you know somebody who may be engaged or is a maid of honor, maybe you could tell them and share it with a friend. Absolutely. So screenshot this episode, share it on Instagram, on Facebook, and tag the wedding duo. We promise to share the love back. Also, if you are interested in more resources or the show notes, you can go to theweddingduo.co. We have one-on-one virtual sessions, a shop, all sorts of fun stuff. Check it out. 